Can this do juiced? Uh, what do you mean juiced content? I could do like a 40 deli, but look at my fucking gear, dog. You want to see juiced content? I'll show you juiced content. Look at my fucking gear, though, okay? Before I do juiced content, look at this shit. This is a Gravitius craft. This is the goal. Look at my fucking amulet, dog. It's got 20 doubt multi and cast speed. No life. This shield is suppression and life. And then res. Okay, and a craft. Like, look at this. I have gold rings on. Let's do juice content with my gold ring. And I'm using a mana flask because I'm still on the cuck budget. Let's go ahead and do some juice content. And by juice content, I mean I'm going to do a 60% delirium up. Oh, I'm so glad that worked. I was really afraid I was going to start attacking and it would do no damage. Oh, look at this, guys. This is actually really cool. I'm actually surprised. This is way easier than I thought it'd be. I don't have the nodes where the bosses are going to spawn, but the bosses aren't going to be an issue as long as you roll your maps correct. And it's not like you're going to be... You are you are not. You are not corrupting your maps at this stage anyway, so whatever. Life on kill for the win. I hope everyone's a little discouraged from juicing, just so juicing is, like, super cheap. Oh, an acceleration shrine. Here we go. Man, I, my mana flask isn't good enough for this. I can't even do my full cast rate. That's so annoying. I have two mapping league starters and one bossing starter that I plan to have guides for that have been tested. Although we'll see what happens once the league actually launches and we get into the arch nemesis changes and whatnot. All three will have full progression guides on max roll and a full POB and video guide on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to Yoink These POBs for your own league start. Let's talk about the mapping league starters first. I've went through and tested Bone Shatter Slayer and I'm satisfied that this will be a great great mapping league starter for those that just want to blast some maps. It has some of the quickest mapping you can get on a league starter and is an excellent pick for those that don't mind maxing out their character's mapping potential while leaving the bossing to other players. This kind of character you'd create to farm expedition, altars, div cards, or any other map mechanic. You just run around crushing skulls and stunning map bosses. It's an absolute blast to play and leap slamming around bone shattering gameplay is super satisfying since you get an explosion built into your main skill. The more you invest into Bone Shatter, the bigger its explosions become, which makes for a great investment loop. You'll eventually hit a point where you can start sunning more than just the map bosses, but also guardians and other unique bosses, which is super satisfying and funny to just watch them sit there in the stun animation while you whoop up on them. We've talked about the strengths of this build, but some of the weaknesses are that it can be very button intensive. It doesn't require many buttons to press while you're clearing the map. But if you don't pop down your Vol Ancestral War Chief, your Protector, your Berserk, your double damage focus, and you throw down your banner, and you make sure your blood rage is up right before the map boss, you do lose a lot of damage. It's totally playable without that, but the map bosses are just taking a little bit longer. If you do not want to press so many buttons though, it's not that it's mandatory, it's just it speeds up the map boss, so it helps it not feel so bad in the damage department. I played it for a little while without the focus cooldown, the all totem and without war banner adrenaline proccing and it worked well enough but man it actually feels so rewarding to get those button presses down because you do get so much extra damage out of that especially just throwing your banner down every time you pop an abyss when you encounter an essence when you're doing harbingers and stuff like that having that adrenaline proc having your banner go down it gives you such a huge boost in damage and it really does feel very good the second main downside of this build is that you're not going to be doing your uber bosses for most of you i I can't imagine this is going to be a very big deal. It's not going to be a deal breaker, uh, but just as a warning for the build, you don't play this as a bosser. Think of this as a pure mapping character to have an honest idea of what this provides you. You'll be able to do your guardian invitations. You could do your uber elder and your maven, but it's not made for that content. So your player skill and patience is going to have to make up for the fact that it's not built for bossing and it's not a bossing ability. The second mapping focus character is of course the occultist. You'll start as poison concoction and respec and gear into blade fall blade blast. This is the premier mapping and experience pushing character and can be easily loaded up into solo self found which makes this perfect for league start with no weapon to have to craft or invest into. This makes it one of the easiest lasting builds to get started with. The play style is super comfy and your damage is really solid on because with Poison Concoction, your damage is scaling off of a flask 
flasks can be crafted with alterations and it makes it extremely trivial because then you can use all your reforges on your own gear gear yourself out and only have to worry about your defenses even though we lost some ailment duration off of the focus mod this is not going to break our single target it's still going to be playable it's going to be just a little bit slower on the bosses but it's not a make it or break it for this build and let's be honest focus cooldowns a little bit of pub padding anyway <laughs> And who is pressing that button? Anyway, be honest. Who here is pressing those buttons and being optimal with it, okay? Maybe we have Ventrua, Ben, Ixile. Oh my god, they're lining up the seismic traps. They're put, they're pressing focus cooldown. They're they're putting down everything all at once, right? Most of us, I, I don't know. I press it sometimes, okay? I get to the map boss, I press it randomly, and half the time I gotta like run away out of a move and it's wasted. All right, whatever. It's fine enough without it. If you enjoy shield charging through packs of monsters, explosions aplenty, then this is the build for you. It's a classic Plague Bearer build that plays like a super fast Righteous Fire character 50% of the time and a quick projectile character the other 50% straight from the axe. Late into the build, we'll respec into Bladefall Blade Blast to obtain more damage and, more importantly, to obtain a great recovery method from life on hit. Poison Concoction Occultist has a recovery issue with only your life flask and a little bit of leech, allowing you to get your life back quickly after taking damage. So, when you swap to Blade Fall Blade Blast, you'll equip a life gain on hit Shaper Ring, and with all the blades and all the blasts, you'll have a huge instant source of life gain, and a life flask to top yourself off with as well. The playstyle of BFBB though is not for everyone, so you can totally stick to Poison Concoction Occultists if you don't mind, and are enjoying the blasty playstyle there with only really a, some damage and a little bit of recovery given up. One last weakness of this build is that it's not a bossing character, just like Bone Shatter. You could do your quest bosses, and if you know what you're doing, you can easily do your Maven and Uber Elder as well, because those are skill-based fights. But you will not be playing this to complete early Ubers. You're not going to be playing this to farm Invitations or to farm Uber Elder Watcher Eyes or Uber Maven. You'll be playing this as a mapping character, farming mapping content. With enough investment, you'll be able to take on these fights. But don't go into this build expecting anything reasonable. To be able to do Ubers on this build, it's going to require 50 or more divines. <laughs> God, that's going to be so hard to get used to. Or even more than that, right? Depending on how all the gearing, the crafting, and how everything lands out with the vines and all that. Who knows? So don't go into this expecting it to be uber viable at all. Expect this to be strictly mapping outside of the void stones. But if you want to know how it goes for the end game version, come on over to my Twitch live stream or my YouTube live stream and catch me live there to see how the build performs live this last character is or i guess kind of is skeleton mages now i know what everybody's thinking weren't they nerfed in the manifesto yeah they got they got fucked pretty bad all right and i was thinking they were super gutted but tie tie killer told me in a call you just gotta craft some of your gear you're not gonna be doing it ubers on tabula anymore yo uh, you just gotta do you know you just gotta craft some of your gear now you're uh it's not that big of a deal you just gotta craft your rings and your shield now this is not copium by the way but the manifesto and the patch notes said the damage could be regained from the loss of crit strike chance through additional critical strike multiplier on the bone rings and your shield and perhaps on the wand mods as well so we don't know what the critical strike multiplier rolls are going to be we only know that it should make up the damage loss and even exceed that once you have crafted gear luckily enough through the Lake of Calandra, we're going to be able to double mods on our gear so we can get a little gambly. We can try to double the critical strike multiplier that we get from minions on our rings, critical strike chance or damage as well, and try to make up some of that damage lost and perhaps even exceed where skeleton mages were capped before. But this all comes with a great disclaimer. I don't recommend this and it's very iffy. I'd say, you know, 60, 40 for me right now. Skeleton Mage seems like it's still going to be really great. It's a super comfortable playstyle. You have huge projectile clear, right? It reminds me uh, of Syndicate Operative where the fans are chaining everywhere, right? You have your Skeleton Mage projectiles shooting, piercing everywhere. They're not convocating to you, but you do get a lot of them. So if you enjoy that kind of playstyle, 
this is still going to be a great build for you. You're going to have max block. You're going to have recovery on block, stopping any of the damage and you can pump your damage from a distance, taking care of whatever bosses you need to do and comfortably farming maps. You will be leveling this build as Absolution Necromancer, which is a super fast leveling build that can carry you all the way into and through red maps until you can purchase your key items, which will be talked about in the video. Plus, with the nerf to skeleton mages, all the gear will be all the cheaper. Honestly, this one could be a bad build if the critical strike multi on the rings aren't that impactful or if it's terribly difficult to craft them with harvest critical strike reforges so this one a little bit iffy it's not the safest pick in the world but it's one you can choose and most likely easily respect to another minion build if you so choose anyways this is what i have planned for a league start let me know what you think of my lineup even if skeleton mages don't end up working too well we'll have at least two great mapping characters back on Max Roll. So check that out. Subscribe to see more build guides, and I'll catch you guys on the live stream. All right, peace.